Jackson with LPT Realty based out of Orlando, Florida. And I am tag teaming this show, The Real Estate Revolution, with my guy. And I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Eric Berry. I'm here with Fathom Realty and Rocket Digital Marketing. So, uh, yeah, we, this is our first show. Uh, glad to have you here, Mike, and uh, everybody else. But uh, we do appreciate it. I hope everyone enjoys. And I also got to give a big shout out to my guy, Randall, in the background. He is doing all the leg work, you know, making us look good on camera, switching the camera angle so you guys can get a pleasure show here this evening. So I just want to uh, let you guys know this Real Estate Revolution is to show that we got a bunch of entrepreneurs. We're going to show you why it's cool to be entrepreneurs. We got people in different um, avenues and different works of life and field. So that way you can tune in and you might be able to learn something. So even if you're not a realtor, we got some other professions and we're going to bring these fine gentlemen on and uh, let them tell you a little bit about the professions. And before we get into it, make sure you guys like and subscribe, okay? That's how we grow the show, right? So make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that thumbs up, all right? All right, so we're going to bring some of our guests on here, and we're going to get into it. We got three fine gentlemen, and uh, we'll let them introduce themselves as well. Awesome. And uh, I love what I do. And I uh, got a group, group of guys. I'm looking forward to chopping it up. Thompson out of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, man, it's super excited about being on this show and all this good stuff, man. Uh, I am a uh, speaker. Also, uh, I'm in insurance uh, when it comes to the side of of commercial insurance and also uh, when it deals with mindset uh, when it comes to sales and all that good stuff. So I'm like, super excited uh, to be on here. So I appreciate that opportunity and uh, let's get it, man. Man, love it. Love the intro. So gentlemen, can you tell everyone before we get started and we talk a little bit about your respective fields, can you guys let the uh, audience know a best way to contact you, you know, a good link to reach you on your business page? Mike, we can start with you. Um, honestly, the best way to contact me is by is by phone, uh, 912-387-6630. Also, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, uh, Realty With Me. Uh, Ryan Carter, you can reach me at uh, ryan at imaginethatpicks.com or my cell phone number, 407-802-0768. And uh, Lawrence Thompson, you can, you can check out my website at Lawrence Thompson junior.com uh you can also uh email me at lawrence l-a-w-r-e-n-c-e underscore thompson the number eight at yahoo and uh, you can follow me on all social media platforms <laughs> you know just look up lawrence thompson and you got me there we go man appreciate that fine introduction gentlemen so let's jump into this segment man we got an exciting show so mike we're gonna start with you man i'm mike you mike we're gonna start yes, with mike sir. and mike baby let's get it mike so mike, mike let's go so you say you're in Seminole County. I'm in Orange County, as they say down here locally. Orange, Orange. County for you people away from down south, right? Um, we got let me, a out of O. Yeah, you know, right? So let me ask you this, man. So uh, can you tell me a little bit about why you joined LPT Realty? I'm with LPT Realty. I know you. You know me. But why did you join LPT Realty? Um, well, I, I would have to say um, they put their money where their mouth was. Um, and I say that in terms of you know, everything that, that any brokerage, um, and this is no knock on anyone else because I've only had the experience with the couple that I've been with. Um, but what I can say is that, you know, they tell you they have all of these resources, they have uh, these people that are available, uh, but a lot of times it's kind of like a rat race trying to get everything that they're telling you that they have. Um, with LPT Realty, everything that they tell you, that they offer you, that they can give you, is at your fingertips. You don't have to go through a bunch of hurdles. You don't have to um, call and sit on the phone for an hour and wait on someone to hopefully pick up and give you the information you need. You know, everything that you need is pretty much right there. Um, that also, um, the people, um, of course, you know, I spoke with you uh, prior um, to you joining LPT. Um, and and I, I trust I trust you. I trust people, you know, whenever you find a good person, and of course, you always value their opinion. Um, and then on top of that, it was just way more flexible, um, way more flexible. I could tell that it was truly a brokerage that was geared towards the agent. Um, it is uh, with it being a little bit newer. Um, it was similar to where I initially came from. 
Um, but I felt like they offered more to me in the direction that I actually wanted to go to um, versus being, um, I'll say, top heavy. Man, that's awesome, man. That's a, Now, I noticed one thing you mentioned. You, you, We were asking about why did you join now? What do you think attracts a lot of agents to LPT, you know, in, in general? Because we're seeing it grow pretty fast. You know, it's reached um, over a thousand in just a short few months. So what do you think is the big draw for a lot of agents that are joining from all kind of brokerages? Um, I would say options. Um, you have options. You know, a lot of times whenever you sign up with the brokerage, you know, they have a uh, here, here's your package. This is what we mm. have. This is what we offer. Um, yeah. Sign up, take it, and hopefully, hopefully, you make some money. But we're gonna make some money regardless, right? Uh, with LPT, they give you options. Um, they give you options when it comes to your pay. Um, they give you options when it comes to starting up. Uh, they give you options with, uh, I mean, from from coaching, mentoring to um, even whenever you get ready to start listing. Uh, whenever you get a little bit deeper, no matter at what level you are, um, LPT has options. And I feel like those options are attractive to, to us because, you know, naturally as people, we, and you know, most people don't like to be told what to do um, in general. Um, they don't like to be boxed in. So whenever you have <coughs> options and you can make the best decision that's for you, um, I think that that would definitely be attractive. Man, that's that's a major response right there. And you hit the nail on the head about that. And what's funny is, you know, in case you guys didn't know, LPT stands for Listing Power Tools, which kind of transitioned to my man Ryan over here. He's 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 the man over here. So, Ryan, man, you know, you do photography, man, and listings. Obviously, you need a photographer. So, can you tell us a little bit about you, as far as like your assessment on like uh, what what does it take to become a professional photographer for people who are interested in that in that business? Uh, well, I mean, technology. Technology's gotten really good. I mean, everybody's phones can take amazing photos. In fact, I mean, some of the photos that an iPhone can take now marvel, you know, rival what I was doing 10 years ago. Uh, but it's it, there's a lot more to photography, just like there is real estate. You know, like uh, if you talk, talk to the average person about what the tasks of a real estate agent are, no one knows. The, the only people that really know are the realtors that live, that live it, yep. you know, and the ones that are successful don't really talk about it because it's just part of the part of the job. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I think just as in uh, your personal life and in your professional life, you want to put your best foot forward, just like with a listing. The listing isn't just valuable because you're going to get that paycheck at the end when you sell it. It's uh, it's that's an investment in your future because that one listing can bring you five other listings from another person that, that just happened to stumble upon you. Or you've got a friend that really wants to step up his game and sees a level of, of marketing that you're providing, and they go, hey, this guy's ready to rock and roll. I can jump right in, and I don't need to waste any time. And right now, time kills everybody. You know, I mean, if you've got to spend a day going to a house, cleaning it up, and then photographing it, and then editing it, and then uploading it, how else are you going to generate money that day? I mean, you're, you you got you to divide your responsibilities up and just say, you know, this is what I value. This is what I need. And then you got to find a, a team that you can uh, build from and uh, put some trust in because, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't trust the person that's uh, doing business with you, you're not going to get the, the results that you want. And that, you know, I like results. I want to hear that Mike's listings are sold the day after the photos post. You know, that means I did my job and he's doing his job. You, man, you hit his nail on the head, and I agree. I mean, trust is a huge part of our business, right? Real estate, ph photography, and you made a good point about results. And many people don't know, with, without us selling the home or, you know, getting a buyer to purchase as realtors, if we don't get results, we don't get paid. You know, we don't have a, a retained uh, yeah. fee up front, you know? So you made a valid no, point No, but you, so. are pay, you're, you are paying out the pocket before you get paid, though. That's for we, sure. We sure is, yeah. A lot of you guys don't realize that in real estate. We have other fees, guys, especially with a split brokerage. So like Mike was saying earlier, we have options at LBT and Zappa being 100%. But not every broker, uh, not every realtor is 100% brokerage. They got a lot more fees to give out. So... We don't make our money until we get results and think about how many times we might not get results. It's a, it's a, it's a rough industry. So Ryan goes to my next question, man. Can you um, tell us a little bit about the packages you provide to your clients when you're doing photos, like some of the different type of packages yeah. you give? Absolutely. Um, I mean, most of the packages that we shoot are uh, like a, a standard 25 image uh, kind of package. It's $105 for the photography. It's $25 for the property website. That brings a lot of uh, add-ons and the marketing tools aspect of, uh, pre-made uh, postcards and flyers, 
automated email systems to the uh, to the homeowners and to any other renters that might be interested in the status of the listing. Uh, as well, we have uh, open house cards and a bunch of other things that just come included. And uh, that allows us to really dial in the marketing for the listing and not just the, the realtor because every realtor's got their own style. Every home has their own style. But my job is to match what the realtor, the realtor's needs are and the capabilities of the house. You know, like you're not going to sell, you know, a mobile home to a multimillionaire. But you've got some real estate, okay. real estate agents that are happy to spend the amount of money on photography you would for a mobile home and not put in the extra uh, time and investment into marketing the listing itself instead of finding that bottom that bottom dollar line. Right on, right on, man. Now we got our next guest here, and I want to call this man uh, the law spit that has spoken, man. Lawrence Thompson coming in, man. He's a very multi talented entrepreneur, man. I think he do everything. If you've seen the living color, he's like, hey, man, he got eight jobs, man. So uh, let's bring <laughs> let's bring him on, man. Lawrence Thompson, how you feeling this evening, man? I'm good. I'm good, man. How you doing, man? Man, I'm good, man. I'm blessed, man. Thank you for coming on, man. Yeah, so, um, yeah. I noticed in the intro, you was telling us you work with some insurance, man. So can you tell us a little bit about your insurance, like what you did in the past and what you're doing now? Can you break that down for us a little bit? Yeah, so uh, me being in the insurance industry, uh, you know, I just recently got back from uh, from a deployment three weeks ago. So I had to kind of put it on hold. My responsibility to my clients is that I want to be there uh, when any event and things happen. So in life and uh, and also if they have a, a something to happen where they need uh, need me, um, I want to make sure I'm back. So now I'm just re, you know, getting everything back going and, and for there. Uh, but yeah, the insurance industry is is something that. Um, when it comes to real estate, you, you kind of need it, uh, not kind of need, you must need it. It protects your investment that you put in there. And so you want to make sure that uh, you have that uh, uh, available for if there's anything to happen, right? Any catastrophe or something like that, or some of the, the, the main breadwinner pass away, then you now have a tax-free check that comes to you to help you with those expenses so that you can keep your, your property, your home and stuff like that. And so, uh, so yeah, so I, I tell people about that. Uh, if they have that uh, investment of a home, uh, to to make sure you have insurance, not just not just your home insurance, but also life insurance, and uh, and those are ways to uh, protect that investment that you that you're putting in there for you know 15, 20, 30 years that you're actually doing. Now, with that being said, you know you 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 explained it real good, but can you give us like the why, like a little bit in detail, maybe some examples you've experienced from people that. Think why, like, what's the importance of having health and life? Because there's some people who really don't know. They don't. You'll be surprised how many people don't have health and life insurance. You know, yeah. and, and and I was kind of shocked to, to hear that. I was assume everybody gets it. You need it. You die. You got to be covered. But people die, man. They don't have it. So what is the real importance of having health and life insurance? Why do people really need that? So so is it, you know the old saying is better is better to have it than not to have it. So is, is that yeah. but. Some people would think more so as though it's a bill, right? So when you look at it as a bill, then you, you're probably going to drop it. You're probably not going to keep it or whatever. But the bill becomes uh, uh, a lot more if you don't have it. So uh, the importance of having insurance, uh, health, life, uh, is is that it's, just, it's to protect you. Now, you know, I know that you're paying into something that you said, you know what? I may not even see the benefits of it for a long time. Well, that's great, but just think about this. This is an opportunity to have uh, your your inheritance or your people behind you, or if you got kids or whatever, or you want to give to a charity. You can give them tax free money in, in in your name and make sure that they can secure the things that when you leave, uh, you created some bills that they can pay for. But you know, I also talk about where uh, life insurance, especially with life insurance, you don't have to. Uh, say it's for your death. Like there's life insurance policies where you can use it while you're living, right? You have mm -hmm. those, uh, you have those opportunities where you can use it while you're living. You can create, you know, you, uh, they give a bad name the whole life and all that type of stuff, but it is an option, right? You got whole life, universal life, uh, index universal life. And these are opportunities that uh, you can actually use that while you're living. Uh, if you need to make a business deal or something like that, or you want to invest in a home, Let's say you let's say you have an index universal life insurance policy that's actually moving with an index and it's moving with an index and it's giving you six percent return on or whatever. And you have this cash flow sitting there and you see a property that comes up that you want to, you know, build your portfolio. Well, you may not have fifty thousand 
right about right there. Or you may not want to go to the bank. You may want to take your insurance policy, take that 50000 that you accumulated and use that. This is what happened with the insurance. They would say, okay, cool. We're going to give you, you got to keep paying your money. You got to keep paying your, your policy. But we will give you this $50,000 uh, based on that you have your policy with us and you'll pay that back at a certain percentage. But in the event that you don't pay it back, your policy will pay for what was borrowed and then your beneficiary get the rest. So nobody mm -hmm. still has a burden, but you still have that investment property that's continuing to build the wealth for your, uh, for those that are uh, you leaving, you leaving behind and stuff like that. So uh, there is multiple ways to look at insurance. Uh, a lot of people look at it just straight for death benefits, but mm. there's a lot of other avenues in there that can be used to increase somebody's net worth or worth uh, uh, wealth. Wow, man, you dropped some gems there, man. I hope y'all was paying attention because I I just learned something. I, I I ain't gonna lie. I'm I'm probably one of the people that had an ignorant to it. I thought, well, you gotta have it because you're gonna die, right? But like you said, we could be alive and still benefit. That's something yeah. I didn't even know. I never thought of it like that. That's that's some good gems you dropped, man. We appreciate yeah, yeah. that. So so now you guys know out there, it's not just about the death, it's not about just your future, it's also for the moment. Now, speaking of the future, I'm gonna transition back here to Mike real quick. Now we're going to go back to the future, man. So Mike, I'm hopping into Lori and I'm asking you this. What is your future goals in being with LPT Realty, man? You just got on board. Now, what is your future goals and your outlook? Um, my future goals, man, I, I really want to, I got into real estate to change lives. Um, I came from a pretty small rural area where, you know, a lot of people didn't really understand the value that was in real estate. Um, and I, Felt like I completely understood it prior to joining and, and getting my license. But um, once I got into it, man, I realized that it, it touches so many lives. One single transaction touches and changes so many lives, man. So um, ultimately, my goal with LPT would be to be able to create a team. Man. I want to be a life changing agent. It's, it's just what it all comes down to. Um, uh, I want to be able to to become so good and great at my at my craft that I can just build up a team and and give back to the next person and to the next person. Um, so I'm not only changing the lives of of a buyer, or seller, investor, um, but even you know that new college student that is just looking for where they're gonna be able to to make their their foothold in life, how they're gonna feed themselves, how they're going to take care of themselves, how they're going to make money that will ultimately change the direction of not only their lives, but their entire family. Now, speaking of changing, you know, you made a valid point that I like too about changing lives. What about a buyer, seller, investor? They all have goals to buy real estate, right? Now, right. you can help change their life, but let, let the people know, because there's a lot of people, can you believe this, in real estate and not even in real estate, but, you know, within real estate and outside of real estate, they're like, I don't need a realtor. I could do this by myself. I could be a for sale by owner. But we know statistically for sale by owners seem to sell a lot less and get lower value in return because they don't have the marketing material. They don't have the expertise. So why exactly. should a buyer, seller, or investor use a realtor from based on your experiences? I mean, you said it. Um, when it comes down to it, man, you don't go to the doctor and tell them, you know, how to diagnose you. You know, whenever <laughs> someone takes the time to learn, to to put in um, hours of studying, to take tests, get licensing, you know, it, it's hard to go in and tell a professional that you know more than them. Now, there may be people who know some surface level stuff. You know, there's a lot of HGTV. Uh, there's a lot of people who watch stuff mm -hmm. on YouTube who... Um, or even just watching a couple a couple clips that realtors post whenever they're going through social media. But at the end of the day, there are a lot of things that that we know, especially from a legal standpoint. You know, there's a lot of paperwork that's involved. Um, there are many safeguards that are involved that we as professionals know to ensure that are in place. Um, you know, essentially, we're the first line of defense to protecting your money because you have to put down an earnest money deposit on pretty much any transaction that you do. Um, and sometimes that's $10,000 plus. And I don't care who you are. If you're a millionaire, you're a millionaire because you're wise with money. If you're not a millionaire, then you definitely need to be wise with your money. And nobody wants to just throw away $10,000. You know, I ran into yeah. a situation, um, honestly, a uh, couple weeks back, man, I had a, I had a guy, um, I was helping him out, been fighting, going back and forth. And, he was in danger of losing a $11,000 deposit and none of it was his fault. None of it was his wow. fault. 
you know, at the at the closing table, you know, they they tried to charge him like an extra six grand. It was all kind of just crazy things that that even me being in the business, I've never seen uh, such a weird and crazy transaction. But because I am a professional, I can sit back and say, I know this is not right. I know this is not correct. You guys need to take care of it and fix it. Whereas someone who doesn't have the experience, the repetition, you know, the repetition is what builds that muscle, is the, what builds the knowledge, what builds, you know, the skill set, essentially. It, it's more than just walking into a house saying, I like it and I want to put an offer in on it. Um, and especially now with how the market is, uh, as a seller, as a seller, you know, most people, they don't have a Ryan in their back pocket. Most people don't have you know, 20 realtors that they that they communicate with and work with on a regular basis. We're surrounded by people who work in this business at all times. So, you know, whether we're looking for a house, we got 20, 30, 50, 100 people that we can reach out and say, hey, does anybody have something coming up? We may be able to find something off market for a buyer. Um, so you don't have to get in a rat race. Um, for a seller, we may be able to find someone who is looking um, that is willing to pay a little bit more than what you ask for, or even for an investor. Investors love off-market properties, you know, yeah. and even in the event that we can't find you something that is off-market, it's still just having the opportunity and that connection, you know, relationships um, truly make real estate agents a lot of times. You know, if, if me and you have a good working relationship, um, you know, there, there may be opportunities where, where you know you may have something coming up and because we work out of the same place i can not necessarily show that because you know of course got to remain legal but um overall it, it's still an opportunity to just be in the know to just yeah. ultimately be in the know um, right. and, and that's what it comes down to man it is speed and precision um and yeah. whenever you're around a, a team of people that can ultimately help aid in that speed and that precision um whether you're buying selling or investing um, you're ultimately going to have the, the the jump start and a foot up on the competition. Hey, hey, you 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 said it, man. Um, Eric, and, and as my co-host, Eric, I know that you kind of involved in real estate a little bit too, man. And I want I want to make sure we get some of your knowledge too. What do you think about that as far as the value of realtors, man? Do you think about you know people the realtors have value because they these people have all these agencies, these companies, and it's almost like they see these open doors or these Zillow agents and all this stuff. Do you think realtors have value or do you think that it's like people can just do it on their own? What's your take on that? No, most definitely. Realtors have a lot of value in this business. Uh, I mean, I, like uh, Michael was saying there with the change in market right now, uh, a lot of these for sale by owners are going to be scrambling. You know, it's not what it was uh, less than two months ago. I mean, the market kind of changed overnight for us, it seemed like. And uh, values are, you know, interest rates went up, values are changing. And, you know, definitely having a realtor to be on top of that and kind of guide you in that decision is going to be what a lot of people really, truly need in this point in time with uh, any of their listings out there. And then also with uh, buying properties, you know, Yes, you can go and call a listing agent and try and get in there and do it that way. But uh, that does take a lot of time and it just depends on what your time's worth. Uh, mm -hmm. So definitely having a real estate agent to help you out in this process. It's There's tons of value with it. Uh, they will guide you through it and make sure you make the best decision possible. And guys, just to add on real quick, uh, realtors, believe it or not, we pretty much are free experts. We're free advisors because if you're a buyer, you're not really paying us anything. That comes from the seller or the builder or whatever the transaction is. So, and if you're a seller, you think about 3% of your commission. Well, uh, that you give out, you're keeping 97% of the proceeds and we're the ones doing all the marketing. We're actually spending more money and time managing your paperwork. So if you don't know, now, you know, now I'm going to go over here to my man, Ryan, because look, man, photography is so undervalued. There are realtors who have the audacity to think like, Oh man, I can do this on my own, this and that, just like some owners. Ryan, how is it from your experience as a photographer working with real estate agents, man? Do you have some realtors that are cocky or do you have good relationships with realtors? <laughs> What's your, yeah, go ahead. Give us the real, baby. Let's, t let's hit it. Oh, man. I love real estate agents. You know, I love them just like everybody loves lawyers. You, you love them until you don't need them. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I'm just joking. Uh, honest, you know, I mean, everybody's got a situation, you know? Everybody's day is different. Everybody's stresses are different. A lot of real estate agents are going to try and get a listing because the listing means everything. And sometimes a listing for that real estate agent isn't the right match. 
you know, and sometimes you got people that force the situation and make things harder or it makes things a, a little bit more difficult. And that's where I come in because, you know, I mean, in, in my career, I've seen everything from, you know, children's messes to R-rated movie scenes being acted out <laughs> in front of me, wow. you know? Oh yeah. I mean, it's a reality show in the making for sure. But wow. you know, Every real estate agent, I think, when they go into the business, has the goal of providing a great service and being the best they can be. And, you know, each person's got their own skills and, and subsets of, of things that they're good at. I personally, I've got the mind and the, the eye of a photographer. I love what I do. And when I go into a listing, I don't think of it as, a, oh, I'm going to take a great photo. It's going to be really artsy. I think of it as, you know, is this image going to add marketing value? Does it make the room look larger? Is it well lit? What can we see off the room? Those are the kind of things that I think of when I set up an image so that when I deliver a final product, the marketing value of that $105 photo shoot is five to six times more. You know, I, I like to sell myself as a value purchase. I might be the best around and I definitely am because I, I, I care about what I do yeah. and I care about my, I care about my customers. And, you know, going back to my days as a, as a Florida Gator, I only know how to do a job the one way and it's the right way. It might take me, it might, it might take me longer. I'm a lot slower than I used to be, but I'll get there and I'll get it done. And, uh, you know, I, I attack every, every listing in that mentality. And I think I, I connect with the homeowners just like I connect with the real estate agent because the personal relationship uh, in this kind of a business is going to bring way more value than just getting the number that they want. You know, like I, I think of it as a personal relationship and I value every single customer I have because of it. And and, and for you guys watching out there, I'm going to co-sign what he just said. And how do I know? Because I use Ryan as my photographer for my <laughs> listings and he is the best oh, in the state of Florida just to let you know. So yeah, Ryan's my photo guy and I'm not playing. You can look up on ZillowRealtor.com and you can see those lovely pictures. That's my man's Ryan's work. So Ryan, man, speaking of these photos, when you're taking these photos as a professional photographer, what are some things that you recommend to people selling their house to do before you take photos and, and realtors listed? What's some recommendations? I mean, that's a, that's a great question. And it's probably one of the most important things for me is in my job is to make sure that the real estate agent is on, uh, is aware of the things that the home needs. First of all, you know, if it needs a paint job, it needs to get painted before I get out there. You know, if there's a, 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 a nursery, that's a disaster, it needs to be cleaned up. Those kind of things. I, I just like to tell the homeowners and the real estate agents that, you know, every image that I shoot is going to be seen by tens of thousands of eyeballs. You know, yeah. and every every eyeball that is going to be looking at that photo is going to be subconsciously judging you. And if you've got a problem with people judging you, you need to clean your house to reflect how you want people to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I, and, you know, it's sad that I have to explain it like that. But sometimes yeah. they're so it's such a I mean, it's one of those the top three stressor in your life, moving death and taxes. So, you know, yeah. it's uh, nice. it's always a hairy situation. But, you know, if I if you tackle it with. Uh, the mindset of I'm, I want to do a job for these people because I want to get them their house sold faster. I want to get them a higher list price, or I know it's a hot neighborhood and you've got a lot of comps that I'm going to have to compete with. So, you know, those granite countertops that you didn't want to put in, I'm going to need to make sure that the kitchen looks extra good. So yes. those are the kind of things that you got to think about, you know, and uh, sometimes when you rush into a listing and it's a listing that, uh, you're, that's not really ready to be listed, but the realtor is avid about getting getting that listing. Those yeah. are the those are the kind of things that uh, that can slow people down, and especially on a you know first impressions are everything. And if you're not showing up, looking professional, acting professional, talking professional, and proving that you're worth the paycheck that you're charging, you know everybody's just going to laugh at you because everybody's got the internet. Everybody can talk. Everybody's aware of how to shop online, and you know that you don't you're not going to go to eBay and buy some shoes that are a half black and white photo when you got the Nike press ad right next to another list, another, another pair. And you know, that's the kind of a mentality that I like to think, you know, my job is to polish that house up to get the highest listing price possible. That's all I care about. Yes. And customer and, service. Yes, indeed. Customer service goes a long way, right? Now, 
Uh, let's go to Bro Law over here. The law is about to speak. Let's get it. Let's get it. So now, 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 Ryan, a little inside joke. Me and Law are Florida State fans. We just had to throw that out there, you know. But uh, <laughs> and Mike, so we'll agree on that. Baby. Ah, man. <laughs> Man. Oh man, I'm gonna have to say that for another sports podcast show, but uh, that's all right, that's all right. So, uh, uh, law man, so now what about commercial insurance? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Is that something that you kind of work with, commercial insurance? So, I'm new in that space of commercial okay. insurance, so I'm not fully into that space, uh, uh, actually learning more into that space, but uh, commercial insurance is, is, is it's a, it's a big range, so. Just think of property and casualty. Property and casualty uh, insurance, it flows into the commercial insurance. And it's a huge range of stuff. Like, we can even insure your pet, right? And so uh, it's mm. a huge range of all those different things that, uh, if you think about it, those on that side, you can have it insured. Um, what I would say is this, is that when it comes to real estate, um, you have a, like, you have a real estate agent, you have an insurance agent. And that insurance agent is with you even though you make that transaction, that insurance agent is still with you as long as you have your policy. So, you know, what I've seen is people don't revisit their policies and when they increase in their family or they make a new purchase or, you know, they do the granite countertops and stuff like that. And their policy stays the same and they don't go back and revisit and say, hey, we added something. Uh, we, we, we got a new baby or something like that. They don't revisit that policy because they feel like they can't go back to that person who written that policy. But as long as you have that policy, that agent that wrote that policy is there for the life of that policy. So if you go back and talk to that agent, uh, you know, make sure you check your policy every time you see there's there's an upgrade or increase in your family that you need to put on. So, well, when it comes to the commercial side, like I said, I'm brand new into it. I'm really rolling back into it now. But that's the big thing I want to say when it comes to uh, you know, if, if you have when you have your home, uh, you know, on the insurance or whatever, a lot of people don't revisit it. They buy it. They send the money to escrow and they just roll out, you know, and they just think yeah. and then all of a sudden something happens and then you only cover it for a certain amount. And the insurance company is going to go by what's on the paperwork. It, it is what it is. That's what they're going to do. They're going to go by the paperwork. They're going to send the adjuster out. And that's what's going to happen. But if you're not revisiting as you're upgrading. Uh, you know, don't get caught where you need in it and it's not enough. Now, with the with the insurance that you normally specialize in, how does that work with like the type of term? Is there because I was I, I have life insurance, too, but it, I was told there's term and then there's full life, like 20 years. Or how does that work with the length of time? Can you try and talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so you have term insurance and you have permanent insurance. So okay. term insurance is you have a certain amount of time. Right. So. You, you have it for 15 years, 30 years, and then after that, it's over, right? Um, and then and then you have to look for another policy or something like that. But they also, but you also have uh, term insurance where uh, if you structure it right, when you get to that 30-year end, you can actually say, hey, I don't need to go do another physical because you, 9 out of 10, you're not going to be in the same health that you was when you first got it. And they can roll it into another uh, another policy. Another term insurance uh, policy is um, where it's like, so just think of this, you're paying into your insurance, right? And at the end of your term, you get all your premiums back. And so you can actually get a term insurance policy like that, where you're paying into the policy. Uh, it's a little higher than just regular term insurance. Regular term insurance is the cheapest on the market, right? You can get it for, you know, $20 for a million dollars, right? You can get it. Uh, and go from there. It's cool. But another term insurance is that, okay, let's say you want this million dollars, but you want all your premiums back from the 30 years. Well, it's called return on premium. You can get that back. It's going to be a little costly. It's not going to be $15. It may be $200 a month, but at the end of your 30 years, you can get that, uh, you can get that return back uh, on your, all the premiums that you paid into it. You can get that back from the insurance company. Then you have your permanent. Your permanent is the long-term ones where it goes up to 100 years, right? You got your whole life, your IULs, your universal, uh, index universal life. So those are your permanent insurance that goes up to 100, 102 uh, there, and you pay for the lifetime of that. But those also are structured with cash value in it. The term don't have cash value. Those have cash value in it where you got to make sure you talk to your 
insurance agents to make sure that it's, it's actually structured right. Also, that you're in the right fund or you're in the right uh, index to actually get a percentage on it. The index universal life insurance, they're, they're struck, they're not struggle, but their main point is to try to make sure you have five to 6% on the money that you invest in. Um, I actually promote that for kids because uh, you can, you actually can insure a kid. I think after six months they're born. So I actually have that for kids because they, they get a low policy where you pay all the way up to like 20 years old before you transfer it over to them. Now they have cash there to get them the car or pay for the uh, pay for the school or something like that that you can pull from. Uh, it gets a bad name because they say, why did, why would you pay for something you're not going to live as long or whatever? But yeah. you also but if you look at the investment <clears throat> side um, of it, uh, it's, it, it is a true investment side. Uh, the lady who uh, two two people that I know, the lady who made Pampered Chef. Uh, when she created Pamper Chef, she took her insurance policy and she took money from the insurance policy to create Pamper Chef. Later, she mm. sold it for $3 billion to Warren Buffett. Uh, wow. Walt Disney, Walt Disney built Walt Disney off his insurance policy. Uh, he took wow. money from his insurance policy to start the insurance policy. So when people say, hey, this is not an investment, this is not there. Well, I, I beg to differ when people are using it to increase their network or do what it is they're doing. So. You just got to make sure you figure out what's best for you, best for your family, structure it the right way, and uh, and then use use the policy. Insurance policies, insurance, I put this insurance prop up everything. Wow. Like the stock market is backed by insurance. Insurance, yeah. everything yeah. is insured. Everything is insurable. And so insurance uh, companies know that. And so they take our money and roll it into the stock market, roll it into real estate, roll it into the things that they can get a bigger return on and leverage. So why not do the same thing that they're doing? So that's what that's what that is. Those are the kind of policies that are out there. Now, hearing that, uh, Eric, let me kind of uh, go to you real quick. After hearing yeah. Lauren speak eloquently on that about like taking some of the policy and the money out, do you feel like that's kind of like realtors and real estate in terms of being able to take like equity out of a home and buy properties. What's your take on that? Is there kind of some similarities there? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, that's, that's great information. I mean, a lot of that stuff, I mean, I, I didn't even thought about some of that stuff that you had talked yeah. on there, Lawrence. So it's uh, great information. Uh, I definitely think I have to reach out to you and talk on some of this stuff, but to pull money out like that, to get into investment properties, that's, that's, that's phenomenal, man. So definitely good, good stuff, man. Good stuff. And before I swing back to Mike Lawrence, I just had a question a little bit um, just just because, man, it was interesting. All you guys are giving me some some interesting stuff. This is why we got this show, man, because I'm learning a whole lot. I know the people are learning a lot. Uh, there, there's been a debate in the insurance industry uh, from people on the outside. They say, should I do short term or should I do permanent? I know you mentioned both. Is there one better than the other in your ex expertise or is it just like what's your take on that? Is, is this is this really a debate? Um, so. I say to me, it's no debate. It's depend on your budget, right? Um, it, it depends on your budget. Uh, when I insure people, we go through a budget thing to say, hey, you know, if you can't afford a permanent right now, let's make sure we give you a term to get you covered. So you, cause you got kids and you got whatever, we give you 200, 500,000 cover you guys, right? And we will structure it that at a certain point, when you want to roll to a permanent, then we can roll it to a permanent and not have all the medical stuff and all that stuff. So if it's structured the right way, then you can get us. You can start out with a term and you can move up to a permanent. You know what I'm saying? I know people who got term insurance, but they got term insurance to pay everything. There's a guy that I know. He has a term insurance for his car, term insurance for his house, term insurance for his life, term insurance wow. for the bills. He has they, they don't stop you for how many policies you will buy. You know what I'm saying? It's they he just structured it that way. So any event that he passed away, his wife and three kids don't have to worry about nothing because the car is paid for, house paid for, and all those different things. So I I feel that it's not a debate. I feel that people are making it bigger than what it is. Know what your budget is, right? Get get something to cover you and then make sure that your agent tells you everything so that you know that you can roll it up and structure it. If you feel like, man, I really don't want to. Uh, you know, just have it that long. Like I said, you got one that's called return on premium. You get your premiums at the end of 30 years. They're going to give you all your premiums back. If you pay $50,000 into that policy, 
they're going to give you that fifty thousand dollars back at the end of your policy at the end of your wow. policy so it's called return on premium so you there's there's a there's a choice for everybody but if you're looking for something that let's say you have the mindset of investing in growth i would say go permanent because there's an option for cash value that you can pull from and like i said any event that you pass away and that that part that portion of money is not taking is not paid back or whatever there's no harm no foul there's no credit checks either that's no credit checks you have a policy <laughs> so there's no credit checks but it's gotcha. no harm no foul they just you got a two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar policy. You borrowed fifty thousand. You didn't pay thirty of it back before you passed away. They just take the thirty from the two fifty, and then your beneficiary get the rest. It is what it is. Wow, wow, man! I'm over here. I was trying to take notes in my head, trying to find a paper to write this down, man. You guys, I mean, all of you guys are dropping some stuff, man, and I love this, man. So we have different fields here and, and 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 of real estate photography insurance and believe it or not all this stuff ties in together because i'm a firm believer everybody's involved in real estate at some capacity because if you think about it when you own a business or work for a company you have to have land to uh, run that right land is real estate that's how i view so we're all connected to it in some way so mike uh, good stuff uh, bro law mike going back to you man you were Law talked yes, about sir. he's new in commercial insurance, right? And I find in yes, real sir. estate field, there's a lot of agents who come into real estate. They hop straight into residential, and uh, some of them go into commercial. Mm -hmm. And some of them are new in commercial real estate. Now, what about you? What do you specialize in? Do you specialize in residential, commercial, or do you do a little a bit of both? Um, as of right now, man, I definitely um, focus on residential. Um, okay. I did try to dabble into a commercial a little bit. Um, but that was more so when I first began real estate. Um, you know, once I once I had a chance to check it out a little bit, um, I will admit I did start out with a pretty difficult client. I had a nonprofit uh, that was, you know, th those are going to be a little bit more challenging, even for an experienced commercial agent, right? Oh, yeah. um, but you know, commercial is is great. <clears throat> it's definitely more lucrative. Uh, but it takes a lot of time. You know, I talked to a few seasoned agents whenever I was uh, going through that process. And, you know, I had one guy, he was telling me he was waiting um, two years. He had a deal that had been pending for, like, I want to say he said it was like a year and eight months. Um, and wow. it wasn't nowhere near closed. <laughs> nowhere near closing yet. This was um, a commercial so, you know, deal? It was a commercial deal. Wow. Okay. You know, they have there there are way more moving parts in the commercial deal than it is with the residential um mm -hmm. transaction, right? Um, so you, with commercial you have to worry way more about legal uh, aspects, about passing codes. You know, of course you have to do an inspection with a regular home. Um, or at least you should. Um, I've heard crazy people saying that their risk told them not to, which is insane to me. Oh, it's wow. insane to me. Instead yeah. of paying a couple hundred bucks to cover the biggest purchase that you have usually made in your life up to that point, they just tell them to skip it. That's crazy. Ooh. But anyways, um, you know, the, the commercial side just has a lot more moving parts. You know, I, I definitely take my hat off to those that are already in a position to do so. Um, and it is something that I definitely see myself transitioning to, uh, you know, maybe a couple more years down the line. Um, but as of right now, um, <laughs> I definitely focus on residential. Now, with you being a realtor in the state of Florida, do you have cert a certain areas of Florida that you cover uh, in central Florida, perhaps, or like any areas within Florida? Like, do you have a specialized area? I mean, definitely anywhere in central Florida um, I'll work with. Um, but I have actually had a client. Um, I was I drove up to Jacksonville, uh, drove up to Ocala, um, and I've even gone down to, you know, Lake Wells, which is probably just a little bit further south than central. Um, but I mean, like, let's be honest, as much as I love helping people, you know, if the client is worth it, or even if it's just someone that I personally know to ensure that they are properly being taken care of, you know, anywhere in the state of Florida, I'll be happy to travel. That's what's up, man. So you, you willing to go the extra mile, literally. I love it. Yes, sir. So, so let's go to my man, Ryan. Now, Ryan, I want to stir up the pot real quick. Cause I know my man Ryan is about that smoke. He said he wants to smoke, right? So Ryan, what do you say to these realtors? who really believe that they can do better than a professional photographer by taking photos with their damn cell phone. They say, I don't, I could do my own. Listen, tell me about that, Ryan. Let's talk about it. Cause realtors do this. I'm gonna be honest. I'm a realtor. I've heard realtors say that. <laughs> yeah.
Mm. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Facts. Let's talk on it. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that that kind of leads to my next question. So, with that being said, in your field, in your expertise, in your experience, what are some of the biggest challenges that you face? Um, and, and that you would give a new person, a new photographer seeking to come into your business, what's some of the challenges to expect? You know, there's no, there's, there's nothing more than, you know, just a, a normal $5 photo would, t would take, you know, um, I think everybody's got their own um, idea of what is uh, necessary to sell the house. You know, the homeowner's got their own idea. The real estate agent's got their idea. I'm sure your wife's got an idea of how to sell the house too. Uh, yep. You know, it's, it's really about managing expectations and communicating um, efficiently is, you know, if I get to a, a listing house and I don't send them an email that lists what I expect to be ready, lights on, windows open, counters cleaned off, dishes out of the sink, laundry off the hamper, stuff like that. If I don't send that out to my customer, how are they going to know? And then when I get there, I have to spend time to either prep it or wait for someone else to prep it. And that's yeah. time that nobody wants to waste. Exactly. So I would say, being efficient and uh, being organized is, is probably one of the most important things in, in this industry. Cause you know, if I get a phone call tonight at 11 o'clock because realtor hours, right. You know, <laughs> and I need yeah. to show up, I need to show up the next day for a photo shoot. You know, if I'm not organized and I can't pull up on my phone, yeah, this is my calendar. This is my schedule. And then in two minutes, you're just going to move on to the next person that can give you the answer you want. Cause they're already wanting to spend money on the professional. Just give them the professional experience. Right on. Right on, man. Well said. Uh, bro Law over here, man. So coming back to you. Now, I know you deal with a lot of insurance. Can you tell the audience a little bit more about your diverse uh, professional background? You you do training as well. You know, you, you're a trainer. Can you talk a little bit about your trainer? Tell the audience a little bit about that. Yeah. So, you know, I actually train on leadership and, uh, and I call it mental fatigue. Uh, mm. and, and, and the reason why I call, and, and the reason why I call it mental fatigue is that it's not, it's not that you are tired and burnt out. It's just, you don't have the fortitude to push beyond what just happened. You don't have the fortitude to just go beyond what just showed up, uh, in the industry of you guys, uh, when it comes to, and it's us too, when it comes to sales, um, you're going to get those no's or you're going to get those things. that's not going to go your direction. And it's like, how do you continue to go on and stay with that motivation, stay with that passion, stay with that drive to continue to push on? So uh, you get beat down all, every day 
and all day trying to make sure that you get that sale or make sure that that person that you're helping get the best product that's there. So uh, I talk about mental fatigue and uh, I also talk about leadership. Uh, I talk about if you're leading a group of people, or if you're in a, you know, you're a part of a team and you're that leader, uh, leaders lead with love and love to me is, is, is an acronym L as being lead O has been, you know, uh, observing V is vocabulary E is for engagement. So as a leader, yeah, I still have a military background in me too. As a leader, most leaders don't, don't lead. And what I mean by that is that they allow their team to, to lead them. And so because they allow their team to lead them the most, when they're trying to give directives or trying to give uh, 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 instruction, the culture is not ready for you. So as a leader, you got to make sure that you put the culture out there that you want and now really lead your people. Now, as you lead in them, they're going to start to develop a certain type of identity, but you're, you're the leader. They understand that you're the leader. So when you come with directives, they're more receptive. Uh, observing. Are you observing your teams? Are you paying attention to them uh, in a way that you need to pay attention to them? Do you know when their attitude change? When you do you know when they, what makes them excited? Excited? Do you see um, where if somebody says something, there's a trigger there? Are you paying attention with your eyes the best way that you can to observe them and know what's there? But don't just also observe with your eyes. Observe with your ears, because they're 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 speaking some things around you, and you might need to pick up on so that you can actually help them move to that next level. They may say something really quick, really soft, but it's that thing they need to get over. So if you're ear hustling uh, in a way to protect them or push them, then you need to observe. Vocabulary. What are the words you're using with your team? Are you using words that cast vision or you use words that cast condemnation? Are you using words that make them frustrated or are you using words to make them excited? You know, I get it. You may come in and say, man, we ain't hit our sale goals today. What are y'all doing? We need to not... That's not always a great motivating type thing to do. Why yeah. not use vocabulary words that say, you know what, we missed it this time, but I know you're amazing. I know you're going to get this done. How can we do this? And then you start using questions. How can we do this? How can we get there? And then now they engage them and they feel more connected to the team to give more, to invest more and engage, meaning engage in the small things that you used to do. Like, you don't have, I, they know you're not going to sweep no floors or you're not going to do the small hmm. stuff, but just right. go and engage with them when they are doing the small stuff, because then they'll know that, okay, I know that my leader still would do this. We know that they're not going to do it, but they still can do this and they still would do this. And they'll, and I believe teams will be, will begin to want to support the leader more when they see that the leader will do those small things again. So, uh, those, that's just one point that I push out and, and actually really go for, and, you know, leaders lead with love, man. And then mental fatigue, you know, we got to get that fortitude in your brain to push beyond what's going on. I like that. That mental fatigue is powerful, man. So with, with, with the words that you speak, man, it's apparent if nobody knows, man, bro, law also is motivational speaker too, man. So I told you he's a man of many trades. Now with you being a motivational speaker and by the way, thank you for your service, man. We cannot overlook that. And for you companies out there that don't give veterans discounts, shame on you, man. Y'all better start hooking the veterans up. All right. So I'm going to call it out. I'm going to say it, man. My parents in the military, and they've been to places where they're like, we don't do military discount. Like, what? So uh, everybody should do military discount, damn it. But anyway, um, with you being a great motivational speaker, what advice do you have for anybody that wants to seek entrepreneurship or just get outside of the norm, like just being motivated in general? What advice do you have as a motivational speaker? Uh, know that the wall is going to show up. Know that the mm. wall is going to show up. Bam. Now, now that you know it's going to show up, what you going to do about it? Climb over it, go through it, go around it, whatever. It's going to show up. It's going to show up in your face. It's going to be there. You can't avoid it. <laughs> we all hit that wall. We all hit that wall. It's like, dang, we had the question. Should we keep me doing this? Do we go back? Do we, what do we do? How we, no, keep going through it. Keep going over that wall because at the end of this thing and at the, and over that wall is what you're looking for. What you're yep. looking for is already there. The dream that you had, I'm, I'm my bad. I'm getting in the motivational moment. The go dream ahead. that no, you no, no, saw, no. keep it going. The we dream that you we saw was completed. The dream you saw was already finished. So you know it's there, 
but you got to get there. Getting there is the, is the issue. Yep. But understand this, when you are motivated, inspired, when you know that it's you and you choosing you, just go through it. The wall is going to show up, though. It's going to show up. Don't buckle. Don't think that's the thing to say, well, I should just turn around and quit. No. Endure it to the end and see that finished product. So if you're going to go into entrepreneurship, if you're going to step out there and do that thing, uh, know that it's going to show up. Now, and then also, don't quit your job if you got a job. Don't quit it too Talk fast, man. It. Don't quit too fast. Talk don't quit it too it. fast because you'll go back. Change your mindset about your job. If you change your mindset about your job, then you'll go to that job differently. I go to a job saying that's my investor. And so I know my investor is going to pay me the money to pay for my dream, to pay for my business. And so when I work for them, I work with them with a, with a great passion and a great love, knowing that at any given moment, you're going to give me some more money. You're going to yeah. give me a raise that I can use so I can multiply it over here to walk out this door. But if you're disrespecting, if you're disrespecting that job you at, then it's it's I say this all the time. Whatever you disrespect, it's illegal to operate in your life. So if you're disrespecting the job and then you're gonna go be an entrepreneur, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna hire somebody who's gonna disrespect the job. So you're not gonna reap the benefits. So don't do that. Don't sow bad seeds. So don't quit your job. Yeah. Use that use that job as an investor till you walk out that door. Man, that was some fire, man. I love it, man. And, and, and to add on to that, a lot of people don't realize in order to become an entrepreneur, you got to have funds to be able to finance your dreams. A job can help do that. So people that bash jobs so much, they got to think about it. The consistency check that you get, even though you feel like you've been overworked, underpaid, it is a means to finance your dream. Once your entrepreneurship outgrows your job, then you can get to a point where you can say, hey, I'm able to quit this. But until then, if you want to jump out on the deep end and listen to these people on YouTube who probably don't have, they're not telling you that they have seven passive incomes, okay? They're not being all the way transparent with you. And you just want to jump out there. Well, jump out there and don't know how to swim and see what happened. Everybody goes down. Gravity is undefeated. So uh, well said, man. So, so Mike, man, let's get back to you over here, man. Uh, this this is going great. How y'all feeling, man? Do y'all got mental fatigue? Anybody? Are y'all good? Everybody good? Man, Everybody it's good? impossible to have mental fatigue after that after that that motivational moment. I, I'm by motivated, Lawrence, bro. Like I, I feel listen, like I'm about to get the ring, man. For this, I know. I feel like I need to go rebound. <laughs> man, I'm, I'm sitting up here like I'm, I, I feel like good. I'm, I'm hyped. Like good. I'm about to go out and play a game or something, man. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Now, 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 Mike, let's get back to you, man, on this real estate tip because you was you know speaking some good gems earlier as well. But now, with you being new to LPT but not new to real estate. What advice do you have for a new real estate agent that's jumping into this business? What what can you say? Ooh, how many you want? <laughs> give me how give many me, you want. Give me, I know we can go I know we can go on all day about that, but give I, me your top your top one thing, your number one. I want your number one. Number one, I got to give you at least 3, man. Okay, give all me right, 3. So, um my number one thing I'm going to say is before you get ready to start, you need to be completely self-aware and honest with where you are um real estate is not it is pumped up to be super glamorous um and we only see the people that succeed but what people don't realize is that most realtors don't make it past their first two to three years there are wow probably a million agents in florida now but you're never going to know that you're never going to see that because there are so many people that fail um, and they just eventually get worked out of it. You know, it costs money. Um, it costs money. So if you don't come into this with, like he said, like a job already where you can at least take care of yourself to, to get by, you know, whenever you close a transaction, uh, whenever you go under a contract, rather, it, you don't get paid immediately. You know, there is usually a 30 to 45 day wait before you actually see the proceeds from that. So the day you become a real estate agent, if you have no other source of income, you are basically saying that I can sustain myself for at least the next two months. Right. And a lot of people don't come in fully prepared. Um, secondly, I would say, understand that you are not the next person because whenever you come into real estate, you're going to find plenty of people again that do it, plenty of veterans. And they're going to tell you what worked for them. They're going to tell you what, what worked for them, what didn't work for them, what you should spend six hours of your day doing but 
you guys aren't the same people. Your personality isn't the same. Your skill set isn't the same. So you have to take the time to figure out what actually works for you. Um, you know, and, and quite frankly, there's a lot of, I mean, to just be blunt and to be honest, there are a lot of biases that we deal with as people in general. So, you know, you have to be aware of, of you, of what you are good at, what you are willing to do. You know, for me, I tried the sitting and cold calling for six hours. And I was ready to bang my Man. head on the desk. I you get hung up on, right? Uh, what call? If you get an answer at all, I remember. I lie to you not. Yeah, man. I true. called for maybe for maybe. I was calling for maybe an hour and a half before I actually got an answer. Damn. And it just it just drove me crazy. It drove me crazy. So it's cold, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the next thing I would say is be organized. I just let that be real simple. Um, just be organized. You know, whenever you do eventually get in the flow of things. Um, initially, you're kind of in this like fray, in this in this urgent mode of of just trying to find the lead, of trying to find the first deal. Um, that whenever you get it, a lot of times you don't know what to do with it, yeah. or you get that one lead, and now you're so focused on this one lead that you don't that what you have coming next kind of falls through your falls through your hands because you're so focused so you have to be organized have a system that actually again that works for you and your personality and who you are um because it's going to be work it's again it's way more than just walking someone into a house saying they say i like it and then you go over their contract um and i think the last thing that i would say is just do your research man um oh, yeah. you, you got to do your definitely. research um uh, all brokerages are going to present themselves the same um but you have to find uh, someone talk open your mouth talk to people ask questions find the veterans that have no personal gain by telling you a lie um find some people that you know that you can trust who have some experience and they can tell you the good and the bad because I mean, pretty much no matter where you go, there will be a positive and you can always find something negative. Um, so do your research. Um, be confident in yourself. Be confident in your choices. And, you know, be okay with where you are. You know, you may not be the agent that comes out selling five houses a month. If you're able to close one house in your first two months, in your first three months, be content with that. But also, again, that goes back to that being aware of where you are and how much time you can dedicate to it. Because we all have to live. We don't want you to go broke. We don't want you to find yourself on the street corner because you tried to to be a real estate agent. You know, yeah, so that's real. Be comfortable. Be confident. Be comfortable with with where you are. <clears throat> be comfortable with your pace. You know, stay hungry, but just be wise. And I got a question for both Michael and Eric at the same time simultaneously. So I'm going to shoot this to both of you. What is your thoughts about having a transaction coordinator, you know, in the real estate field? Do you guys feel like that's advantageous? Do you feel like maybe not, you know, because it can be challenging or it could be advantageous depending, I guess, what you guys thought about transaction coordinators? So I go, I go first here on that. Uh, yeah. I've, I've looked at one, uh, you know, until I get to the point where I can't handle the deals myself personally. Sure. Let's go and do it. Uh, but we like, like, so with our rocket digital system that we use, I've got a lot of things that I automate the processes in there to kind of take some uh, stress off my hands with it. So, you know, transaction coordinator in the future. Sure. Let's do it. Let's uh, go ahead and pay somebody to do the, uh, the, those tasks and stay on top of it while we go out and find the new deals. Now, you, I know you mentioned about Rocket Digital. Could you elaborate yeah. a little bit on that for the people who might not know what that oh. is in detail? Yeah. So, uh, you know, like Michael was saying, you know, some of the top things do, you know, you got to have a system. And that's where Randall and I on the back end here, uh, we, we I, I needed a system. I had too much stuff going on in my life. And like you said, you know, leads fall through the cracks. Things just happen. And then sometimes you'll keep up with it. And uh, one thing I've, I've found is. Uh, consistency is the key. Pick something you like, stick with it, and then have a system. And then when you have that system in place, uh, everything just kind of falls in in, in in line with it. And that's where, uh, you know, I used to use KV Core on my end, and then we went looking at other options, and then we found this option we built out to kind of built out to our needs, 
And that's where the Rocket Digital Pro system comes into, you know, is all my Legion is tied right into it. All my CRMs tied into it. My landing pages and all my Facebook ads, every bit of that comes into one unified platform to where I've got everything there at my fingertips. And I don't have to jump into a couple different systems to find it. Uh, and, and so all my, all my, uh, workflows are automated so my nurture you know once a lead comes in the system if they're not looking to buy for another six to twelve months uh, we don't want to forget about them we want to make sure in six to twelve months they're reaching back out to us and that's where uh my system will wind up keeping keep in front of them keeping in contact with them you know reaching out to them occasionally uh do a monthly newsletter you know whatever that follow-up system that you have to keep in front of people oh uh, it can be built out to whatever fits your needs and that, that's a cool thing with the uh, wow that's the awesome so yeah yeah, that's so, awesome, man. That's amazing. So it sounds like, you know, this is very beneficial and advantageous to realtors and realtors. If you're out there, pay attention because we have a lot of things out there. But, you know, do we even know how to use them? How efficient are they? And this sounds like this is totally efficient because I know me. Heck, I can't remember what I did yesterday and this morning, let alone six, 12 months from now who I got to follow up with. So that's pretty cool. I, I've been sitting here and, and, and my Facebook ads running. The system is constantly responding to these people, even while we're on this meeting here. So man. It's, uh, it's always working. Yeah, and we're definitely going to have some some uh, follow-up with that in future shows. we definitely like to elaborate. So about, how about you, Mike, with TCs? You, do, you, do you believe in transaction coordinators? What's your take on that? Um, I would actually agree with what he said. Um, I, I don't believe that it's something that is necessary by any means whenever you first, whenever you begin. Um, and quite frankly, you need to understand how the process works, even if you do have a transaction coordinator. Um, so that's definitely not something I recommend coming out of the gate. Um, and personally, I will just handle them until I feel like I can't. Um, but even at that time, um, I would I would definitely consider getting a transaction coordinator. But um, personally, I'd rather just find someone and get them, you know, qualified to do transit to handle it and just teach them. That's money that, you know, I could have coming into my household. You know, I could teach my fiance how to do it. And um that could be a service that she off, offers for someone else. You know, it's short, quick, easy. Sit down on the computer, do what you need to do, uh, make a little checklist. It, it, it's it's something that I feel like will be helpful whenever you're busy. But I also, again, like I said, I, I would just teach. <laughs> I would teach someone here how to do it so that money can stay in in house. Hey, that's what's up, man. I love it. I love it. So uh, I want to go back to Ryan, man, our man over here. Ryan, you uh, I know you mentioned it earlier in the intro, but I kind of want to elaborate on it, if you don't mind. Can you tell the people what areas of Florida you service? Do you have any specific areas or do you go wide range uh, with your photos? If someone want to use your services, how, how does that work? Well, uh, I drive I drive everybody to our website. You can order it uh, through the an address system it spits out the zip code and it gives you options of photographers we have a, a network of photographers uh in the central florida area it's a family business the photographers are my blood my brothers my mother it's been a family business since my dad started doing it and i i was playing football in florida and then i i jumped right into it so uh we cover pretty much florida <laughs> it just you know, if you, we go to Tampa, we go to New Smyrna Beach. I mean, I was in New Smyrna Beach over the weekend shooting a great nice. condo on the water for a real estate agent. And, uh, you know, tomorrow I'm going to be in Citrus County. You know, um, my clients, they take listings all over the place. I've got some commercial people out in Citrus County that I'm going to be doing some property photos for. And then I've got people up in Ocala that I do horse farms. And, and then I get calls for beach resorts down in Miami. You know, it's uh, really... I, I love photography and I love what I do. And I, I'm blessed to be in an industry where I can meet a new person every day and I get to share my thoughts and feelings on what I do. And I, I get to see how it, my interaction leads to their life. And I, I love seeing the progress that way. And I think coming from a team aspect uh, of my life, playing football in college, I, I enjoy watching the team progress. You know, like for me individually as an offensive lineman, no one cared about what I did during the game, but I sure as heck cared if my running back had 150 yards or if my quarterback had no sacks, you know, like, so I, I attack my, my business, like it's a team and everybody's on my team until they don't want to be on my team. So I'm going to give, I, I, <laughs> I drive everywhere and uh, you know, I love doing it. 
And that's why I got the best photographer in Florida. You hear, you heard it here first, man. If he's an O-line, his natural instincts is going to transition over into that professional field, guys. So he's going to protect you. He's going to make sure you don't get sacked. Now, speaking of that, how does it work with weather? Because it rains so much in Florida. You know, how does it, how does it, how does it go with that, with photo shoots, rain, stuff like that? How do you deal with that? Well, uh, obviously, I, I always try and uh, touch base with a real estate agent about an hour before the photo shoot. Uh, if, if the weather is looking a little questionable, but I like to, I try to, uh, to touch base with the real estate agent so that I can understand a little bit of the timeline, you know, cause if, if I've got a, a really fast timeline, I know that I'm going to need to set up an appointment early in the afternoon, early in the morning. And then if it is raining, we have the ability to erase the rain and put blue skies in the sky. So, uh, you know, that costs a little bit more sometimes depending on the image, but if it's if it's a digital image, I can make it perfect. Just bottom line, like, it is. Yeah. So so my man Ryan can adjust. It doesn't matter. Rain, sleet, hail, snow, man. He's don't he's adjustable. Don't even matter, right? I, I like it. the challenge. Honestly, make it hard for me so that I have to work for it. There you go. You know, I like See, that. I like that grind, man. Man, that I told you guys, I got the best photographer, man. I don't know where y'all y'all believe me, man. Y'all gonna know now. So man, that was well said, Ryan. Thank you so much for that. Now, bro, yeah. law. We can't keep you quiet for too long, man. We got to hit some more of that fire, damn it. That motivation was coming out. Now, I want to know this for myself, man. This is just me wanting to know. And I'm sure that after hearing the great motivation that you just eloquently uh, spoke, the fans want to know too. What is your why? Like, we know the type of substance you give, but what is Lawrence's why? What is Lawrence's deep root background that got you passionate about giving motivation to others? What is your why? Um, I got to give my nieces and nephews permission. I have <laughs> okay. to give them permission. Um, yeah. You know, growing up inner city, uh, mm. growing up how I grew up and whatever, and, you know, seeing what's out there, uh, knowing what's, you know, I'm in Memphis, you know, knowing the mindset that's here in the city. Um, I got to give them permission. And, and meaning that I got to do the things that I need to do so that when they say, uh, I need to do this or I I seen this. They can't say that they never seen nobody close to them ever done it. Right. Mm. So, uh, wow. you know, I, I, I got a I got a, I got a nephew that he looks at me and be like, yo, I want to be able to be an entrepreneur. And he like he don't have no excuse of not mm. having somebody he can come talk to, uh, you know, that can do it. Um, I got, you know, some small nieces and a, and a, and a little nephew, two little nephews. They're too young right now, but as they grow up and come up, they'll say, hey, what did my uncle do? Uh, I can be able to tell them, hey, I, I authored a book. And so if they want to write a book, they have no excuses. So my why is to give them permission so that um, they don't have to sit back and think that it's not possible. It is possible. I've done it. I put forth the effort to do it. W will I make millions out of it? Don't know. But. The point of the matter is that it, at least I started it, right? And so I'm not here to leave a legacy. I'm here to change a bloodline. I have no kids, mm. so I, I I don't. I'm not here to leave a legacy. I'm I'm here to to change the bloodline. When I look back back behind me, they had a lot of struggles. They had a lot of what we gonna about to do. What we should have do. What we are we we gonna do? And I haven't seen that manifested. Well, I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna manifest it so that when you see it is done. You have no excuses. Now you have permission to believe, dream big, dream hard, uh, travel the world, travel the country, uh, shake hands with, uh, you know, who's who and, and, and be, and don't be afraid and don't, don't be inferior when you go into rooms because you know what? It is possible. So that's my deeper why. And, uh, and I have a, I have a selfish why is that I want to be famous, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. I want to be famous. <laughs> you know what Let's I'm saying? I, I want to see my face on TV and all yeah. that type of stuff. So you yeah. know what I'm saying? I want to be famous because I want to love on people with my voice. I know that my voice is, is my gift and I want to love on people with my voice. So I, I want to be famous. That's a selfish thing I want. Well, you know what? I, I'm going to be selfish to say I want you to be famous on this show personally. You know what I'm saying? So I'm with you on that. So I love it, man. Um, so uh, what what advice can you give? Because man, you're like I said, you're multi talented. You have so many facets of professions. You you're in the service. You have deployment. You have to deal with going to another country. Then you have to manage motivational speaking, insurance. You know, training. 
like, man, how do you do it? Like, how do you manage time effectively while attending to all these facets of business? What can what what advice can you give to someone who does not know how to manage time when they be like, I don't have enough time? How do you make this work? Uh, by saying no, uh, it's OK. It's OK to say not today. It's OK to say no. It's your life. It's your life. Don't allow the, the, the thing you're doing. Don't allow the business. Don't allow whatever to push you. I don't allow the job to motivate me and push me. I, I'm on time. I do what I'm supposed to do. I do above and beyond that. But when it when when I say I'm done, I'm done. When I say I don't want to, I don't want to. So I just make sure that I schedule it like that. And then it's like, whenever I say, okay, I'm going to spend two hours on insurance. I spend two hours on insurance. I make sure I effectively use that time. So that once I say I'm done after two hours, I ain't going back. Like that, that'll happen tomorrow. Uh, right. I have to say it. If the world ends, if the world ends tomorrow, I didn't supposed to do it anyway. So <laughs> I'm going to say no. I'm going to stop and just remove myself. And, and do that. So uh, when I say when you can manage your time, uh, manage your time. It's you. You're the one that's in control of that. You control that. You can control that time. OK, well, I got a nine to five and I can't control that. Yes, you do. Go to the nine to five. It's OK. And then when it's time to go to lunch and you tired, go take a nap. Don't go eat. You're not starving. Like you can eat that in dinner time. You know, do something that manage or go do some kind of self care at your one hour to give you that energy to go forth. So um, manage time is just you managing time. Uh, uh, a lot of times I see when when I see young, especially in the military, young airmen say, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. And it's like, you don't employ your time. That's the reason why you don't have time. You're allowing time to motivate you and you not motivate time. So when you start to employ every hour, you'll realize you have more time than you think you have. And so yeah. what I do is, is I employ every hour. I make sure every hour has a job. And even if that job is for me to rest and sleep <clears throat> or go play golf or go do something stupid that I want to do, that's, 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 that's how I manage it. So, uh, yeah, I have all these things that's happening. People even ask me, well, how do I sleep? I say, I sleep very well. <laughs> and it's just, you know what I'm saying? So, and, uh, and I'd be like, well, I manage, I make sure I employ each part of the, all my, all the time that I have. And I, and I realize I have more time on my hands when I do that than allowing time just manage me and push me. Got it. Got it, man. Wow. This is, this is very powerful stuff, man. So we are actually pile on, um, but we had the show set for an hour, but this is what happened when you get so many great speakers on here, man, we kind of went a little over. So uh, I do want to thank you guys for coming on this show. If you have um, any last things that you want to give out to the people that you want them to know about you and your business, please feel free to do so now before we conclude, we can start with Eric and then we'll wrap it all up with Mike. Uh, Ryan and Broloff to finish it off. Eric, you have anything you want to tell the people? Yeah. Hey, thanks everybody for uh, watching the show this evening. Uh, everybody's information will be in the description below. Uh, we will have replays up on YouTube. Uh, so definitely Michael, uh, Ryan, Lawrence, Mike, everybody, Randall, everybody really do appreciate it. And, uh, I think, I think we had a great first show and look forward to many more of them. Uh, and you'll even have our link to our website below too. So. Awesome. Awesome. How about you, Mike? um i'm honestly man just thank you first and foremost man just for being who you are man it's been a blessing to be connected to you thank you two gentlemen um as well for for helping put it all together um and i, I thoroughly enjoyed it myself um i hope all of our viewers uh enjoyed it and took something away from it um even as a participant man i can definitely say that i walked away with with some helpful helpful knowledge from this awesome awesome Absolutely, man. Thank you, Mike, and everybody for having me and just, you know, caring about what I have to say. It's, it's nice and uh, is valuable information. Lawrence, I, uh, I'm ready to run through a wall, buddy. Let's do this thing. <laughs> man, <laughs> let's do it. And bro, love to, bro, love to finish it off, man. Give us some of that motivational fire and how the people can get in touch with you and your businesses, whatever you want to say. You got the mic. 
Hey, first of all, I want to say thank you guys for allowing us to come on this platform. Everybody who's watching this platform, make sure you like, share, subscribe, do everything you can to support this channel, to support this uh, this this move or what they're doing. Uh, these brothers here, they have great knowledge that's going to pour into you. You ask, you guys can see the value that was given. If you was at a conference, you'll be paying five or six thousand dollars to sit here to listen what they have. So. Uh, don't let it be one time that you go through. Make sure you share this. Make sure you like this. And make sure you go ahead on. And leave comments, man. Leave the comments. They need questions. They need questions to actually answer for you guys. So uh, don't uh, not give them a, a question. If it's something that somebody said on here and you want somebody to talk about, make sure you do that. Um, the last thing, man, follow me on all social media platforms. You can just type in Lawrence Edward Thompson Jr. I will pop up as the first. Or you can go to Google and type in Lawrence, in Lawrence E. Thompson Jr. I created so much content where Google now pushes me to the first page. Uh, you can follow me on there. Um, uh, and the great motivational thing to end this thing out for me is that, you know what I'm saying, don't allow uh, an opportunity to pass by you while you're paying attention to it. So go ahead on and make sure that in the midst of when you see an opportunity, take advantage of it. Don't just sit there and watch it and look at it. And then once it passes, you say, oh, shoot. Man, I missed that moment. Don't say that. Go ahead on and uh, dive into that, man. So I love you guys, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it again. And like once again, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Let's go. That's it, man. So I want to give a special thanks to all the viewers that are tuning in and the viewers that are coming in the near future because we're going to grow this bad boy. I got to give a big shout out to my man, Randall, behind the scenes. You guys might have not heard Randall speak, but guess what? Because Randall's is the powerhouse doing the, the work behind making us set up to have all these beautiful faces presented to you with this great information. Big shout out to my man, Eric over there. Big shout out to my teammate, Mike. Big shout out to my photo man, Ryan. And big shout out to the law speaks, baby bro law. Okay. So uh, you guys make sure you tune in every Tuesday at nine o'clock. We're going to be coming in. Gentlemen, can we have y'all back on again? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, man. Definitely. So we're gonna be we're gonna be having y'all come back on again, man, in the near future. Thank you guys for tuning in, man. So we're about to cut it off, wrap it up. Make sure you like, subscribe, like Bro Law said, and uh tune in next Tuesday, man, nine o'clock. We back on. Yes, sir. Awesome.